uh, storage units cleared out and um, you know we're going to eventually need gravel in the parking lot and you know and we got to we're now that we got to send lights can be thinking oh, we do need that owning over that don't we <laughs> yep hallelujah it's like oh and now we do need the owning hallelujah so uh, but now we got the doors glass doors we know we need the owning hallelujah and if you haven't been out here at night it's lit up like a Christmas tree out here yeah, it's, it covers the field. The other place is dark. It's right along the side of this building because where the lights are, it catches. It doesn't come down. This side's lit up, and actually her carport behind us is lit up. <laughs> she said, um, uh, I, I, my carport's lit up now. <laughs> she wasn't sure if she's going to like it, but now she likes it. She's kind of like, it's not, it's, it's lit up. <laughs> it, it was dark. We were out here one night, came out here one night during the uh, winter, and there were 10 deer bedded down out here. On the side of the building, they, they were a couple of them up grazing. They just stood there and looked at us <laughs> for a long time. They just, yeah, yeah. I, now that Nathan's already beat you to the punch. He said I, he could get his limit in one night. Of course, it's against the law to hunt at night, so he's not going to be doing that. <laughs> yeah, they were, they were all just sitting out there bedded down and uh, grazing and stuff. That was kind of cool. Yeah, but now there's more lighting. And uh, then we've had people come up here and, and, and having nefarious activity going on in the dark. So that's over. It's lit up. Hallelujah. So um, no, when, no Tuesday night prayer this week. Uh, our, our prayer person who takes care of setting that all up is in uh, France. Hallelujah. They're in Paris right now. And, um, then, uh, and Shannon and Dennis are in Venice right now. Hallelujah, and I'm here. Okay, but not until until after church, so that I'm gone for a week. Hallelujah, we're going down. So, um, Dr. Bill will be doing Wednesday night, so come out and be here for that. It's going to be a live service. Hallelujah, and uh, but no prayer, no 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 virtual prayer this week uh, because of all the um, obviously you know. I mean, they could. I guess he could set it up from over there, but you know, there's six hours difference, so it'd be like two o'clock in the morning for her to set it up. And I don't know that she wants to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning and do that. I wouldn't, you know. And um, I'm, I'm jealous of this trip for them. Uh, Jesse and Cap did all the Normandy beaches that we had done when we took them over there. And they had done Mont St. Michel, the Abbey out on the West Coast on that little island. And, uh, but they did um, the St. Mary Grace, the, uh, the uh, first city liberated by the... Um, allies in world war ii where the guy got hung up on the bell tower in the parachute and it rang in his ears all night long that's the way we couldn't go there because we couldn't make that trip on the we're going across normandy we had to go to mont saint michel and to go up to uh, saint mary glace was a, another half a day trip we just didn't have that in our trip when we were there so but they got to go they got the parachute guy got a dummy up there with a the parachute hanging from the bell tower um <laughs> so, you know I, I wanted to go and then, um, and then, and then Shannon and um, Dennis, we when we were over there with them and went to Italy, we couldn't get to Venice, but they've been in Venice. <sighs> I guess I'll just have to go back. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Go, go, go! Get some Bible schools. Go preach. Go do some cool stuff too. Hallelujah. Well, so good to see everybody. Yes, I should be live now. Okay. Was it a little setting or something, or just? It was. Oh. Well, listen. We we. Uh, <laughs> well, there you go. Woo! All right. Let me get this up. Hallelujah. Expedition Church. So now we can share it, guys. Whenever it shows up on my Facebook thing, Hallelujah. It says we're doing it. I, I could have had it come back, but now it's not on my Facebook yet. All right. <clears throat> when it pops up, share it because there's people waiting, to, probably waiting to get on. Um, uh, Linda Rowe can't come today. She's dealing with something, and we just believe God. She's the healed of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, made whole by the power of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God forever. And um, we thank God for the word of God, the power of God, and we've uh, sent back with her that she's the healed of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. So I'm going to share this. So. And, uh, yep, okay, share it, share it so people can join us, and then we're going to get on with the service. How do that? I normally do this while we're doing, when we first come on, but um, it, it wasn't up. 
we got our um, our compasses in our go our, our our copper compass, and we've kind of put it up. We're gonna put it up higher. Down here is too low. It's too big. But it, that, it looked like that previous slide, and it's got um, LED lights behind it that you can change the colors. Uh, so it's gonna be really cool when we get that up. And uh, glory to God, a lot going on. Joe's gonna be working on the uh, swing set sometime. Sometime. <coughs> if you want to help him, he'd love to have the help. Wouldn't you? Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> a lot of them are actually going to have to take apart the sand just to get to it and get it off. So um, any kind of help with that would be great. All righty. It's time for the Sunday morning tithe and offering. If you need an offering envelope, they're on the seat backs in front of you. Um, also, if, if they're not one right there in front of you, just look around and wave at somebody and say, can you get me an envelope? And they'll grab one for you. Uh, using uh, PayPal or Cash App, go ahead and get that ready. Hallelujah. We love God. You love God? Yes. Good to see uh, Jeffrey and Satoya this morning. Look at the hair on that baby. Lord, have, and of course, we always love to see you guys, okay? Don't, don't think we're, we're not just on the baby. We like you too. <laughs> Hallelujah. And... Um, so we got, we're going to have um, a half full house in the nursery this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, and the nursery is open, guys. So whenever you think you want to, and my wife's in there. So she loves babies. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the time the offering brought into the storehouse. We thank you that heaven's windows are open and you empty out blessings. We don't have room enough to receive in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody agree with that by saying, <coughs> amen, 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 amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe. Hallelujah. We're thankful to God that he is faithful to his word and does what he said he would do. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Hallelujah. All right. And now all of our children, uh, young people can go to class. Hallelujah. Miss um, Chris is doing uh, children's church this morning. Hallelujah. So you guys go in there and have a good time. Alrighty, hallelujah, and we're right on, uh, Brother Larry came out last week and sprayed the parking lot in case you, you can notice that all the grass is dying and all the rock, it's, uh, it's much browner than it was, huh, it's a little sticky, it probably needs another coat uh, to, to really kill it, you know, um, I guess he has to work on his Jedi powers, <laughs> All righty. Well, go ahead and open your Bibles, if you will, to the 11th chapter of the Gospel of John. Praise God. Well, today is Easter Sunday or Resurrection Day. Hallelujah. Um, when we celebrate the resurrection, glory to God. You know, Friday was, uh, was um, um, Good Friday and um, where, you know, Jesus was crucified. You know, last week was Palm Sunday. He made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And then during the week, combated with the, um, the Sadducees and Pharisees, and they took counsel on how to kill him, and uh, but Judas betrayed him. And then uh, they came and took Jesus and crucified him, and the high priest sending him to Herod. And, you know, and of course, they, did, they went ahead and did. Uh, that was that last official act sacrifice by the high priest. Hallelujah. Jesus hung on the cross, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Luke, I mean, John chapter 11, looking at the uh, 25th verse. Uh, we'll back up. We know here the story is uh, Lazarus has died. Jesus comes and, you know, he, he waited the fourth day to come. Uh, and when we, we said this before. The reason for that was that the Jews believed that the spirit stayed in the body for three days. After the fourth day, you were really dead. And if you ever saw the Princess Bride, you know, he's, he, well, he's not dead. He's just mostly dead. Well, Jesus waited until he was completely dead, according to their doctrine or their teaching, okay? And he came, and um, in verse 21, Martha says, Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. He said, thy brother shall rise again. 
And she said, I know you're rising in the resurrection at the last day. And then Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Hallelujah. And the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And what, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this. So Jesus makes the declaration that he is the resurrection. Amen. Hallelujah. And he, and, but she said, I believe that thou art the Son of God, which shall come into the world. Hallelujah. And then, of course, he raised Lazarus from the dead. Jesus is the resurrection. Say, Jesus is the resurrection. Thank God he's the resurrection. He was raised up. He said he is the resurrection. You know, and, and partially that is prophecy because he's going to become your resurrection. Yes. Hallelujah. When he was raised up, he became our resurrection. And glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we want to talk about today, you know, we, we, um, we focus on Jesus being raised from the dead. Amen. You know, Easter, we, we, uh, Resurrection Day, Easter, we come and we, uh, we talk about Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. And we celebrate that Jesus is alive. Awesome. Amen. Uh, it is significant. It is the most significant event in human history. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That Jesus was raised from the dead. He conquered. Hallelujah. The death, hell on the grave. In Revelation 1, 17, Revelation, hallelujah, 1, 17 and 18, he said, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying, fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we celebrate Jesus being alive. He conquered death. He conquered the grave. He conquered hell, glory to God. And then took the keys. What are the, those keys represent authority. He took the keys that Satan had, the authority that Satan had over humanity, and stripped him of it, glory to God. Hallelujah. I said, how do Colossians 2? Verse 12, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who also raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out, hallelujah, the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled, hallelujah, principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus arose. You know, when Jesus died on the cross, he ascended into the region of the damned and, was, and, was, and suffered for us and was, and, and, was, and was tormented. Look at the 22nd Psalm. Hallelujah. Verse 6. Oh, we'll just start. We'll read the whole thing, or most of it. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, what, does that sound familiar? It is believed uh, theologically that Jesus quoted the 22nd Psalm on the cross. Okay? And the reason is we have recorded, he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then the very last phrase of verse 31 says, he hath done this. Um, the Greek version, when he said, it is finished, can be translated, he's done this. In other words, or, or this, this is the same phraseology in the languages. It is finished or he has done this. Okay? He quoted the 22nd Psalm on the cross. Hallelujah. Why art thou so far from helping me? And for the words of my roaring, O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, thou hearest not, and in the night season, and I'm not silent. But thou art holy, 
O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted um, in thee. They trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. But I am a worm and no, uh, and no man, a reproach of men, and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip and shake the head, saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. But thou art he that took me out of the womb, and didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast from thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and roaring lion. Now listen to this. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. Um, my strength is dried up like a pot shirt. My tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. Now, this is an ab absolutely accurate description of crucifixion. Um, it is estimated that Jesus lost somewhere in the neighborhood of 25% of his body weight on the cross from dehydration and loss of fluids and blood. Um, so he, you know, so if you, if you weigh 200, he, dropped, he probably dropped maybe 50 pounds, completely dehydrated. It says his heart was melted. Uh, all of his bones were out of joint. When they dropped him into the, into the hole when they crucified him, they just, just snatched all the, the bones out of joint. And then he said, my heart is melted in the midst of my bowels. Remember when they, the, they came to him, they didn't break his bones, they stuck a spirit inside, and water came out, then blood? That was just a description. They didn't understand that white corpuscles and red corpuscles separated. His heart had ruptured and was caught into the, the heart sac. You know, there's a, heart, there's a sac. Membrane around your heart. And it ruptured, and the blood just flowed into it. And then after that time, they separated. Have you ever seen anybody that um, had, we, we went to our neighbor's house one time. He had died, went in, and he was blue on the top half of his body and, and kind of white, whitish, ashy white on the bottom. It's because he had been, he had been dead for so long in the house. The wife came home from work, and he, we don't know how many hours. He'd, the, red and blood, the red and white corpuscles had started separating from the death. Okay, so what happened when they stuck that, that into a side, that, that clear liquid that looked like water was, was really the, the white corpuscle serum of the blood came out first, and then the thicker um, red corpuscles came out behind it. His heart exploded. It was melted like wax in the midst of his bowels. I mean, this, we're talking 1,000, 1,500. David wrote this by prophecy. Hallelujah. And, and, you know, uh, his strength is dried up, completely dehydrated, tongue cleaving to his jaws. Verse 16, for dogs have come past me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. For, listen to this. They pierced my hands and my feet. 1,500 years. You just can't make this stuff up. Hello? 1,500 years in advance. Uh, I could tell all my bones. See that? He's dehydrated. They stare at me. Then they part my garments among them, cast lots from my vesture. Be not far from me, O Lord, my strength. Haste thou to deliver me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling, from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast hurt me from the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name in the midst of the congregation. I will praise thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. Can y'all say amen? Amen. Y'all yeah, can turn the thermostat back up. I had to turn it down just to knock the heat off, but it's, it's, it looks like it's getting a little chilly in here. Praise the Lord. I will. Where, where is he right now? He's being gaped upon with the mouth. Are you here? He's being tormented by the enemy. He's paying the price for man's sin. But he says, I will declare thy name. Amen. I will praise you in the midst of the congregation. Hey, speak in faith. Can you say amen? Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him. Fear him, all ye the seed of Israel. He hath not despised nor abhorred the afflicted, hallelujah, uh, of, of the, afflict, the affliction of the afflicted, neither hid his uh, face from him, 
But when he cried unto him, he heard him. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. And all they that, and they that be fat upon the earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him, and none shall keep alive his own soul. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for generation. They shall come and declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born, that he hath done this. Notice that you cannot keep your soul alive, your own soul alive. I saw a thing yesterday where the, uh, one of the senators for Georgia last year when he was running made the statement that, you know, there's a, a lot more to Easter than just the resurrection of Jesus for both Christians and non-Christians. If we work towards helping other people, we can save our own selves. He's a reverend of Antichrist. I don't, you know, these people, you go put a reverend on and go in there and hoop and holler and, and, and spit cotton and act like, you know, and people just la laugh it up and they don't listen to what you're saying. You cannot save yourself. That's why Jesus came. That's why Jesus went to the cross. That's why Jesus went through this, this what we just read here. That's why Jesus paid the price, glory to God, because you could not do it. You could not save your own self. No one could save their own soul. You're incapable. If that were true, nobody would, Jesus would not have had to come. Only, the, only God himself could redeem man. Because only God himself was outside the domain of Satan after the treason of Adam. And Jesus came and walked the earth. And for three and a half years, the last three and a half years of his life, he was in ministry to share and to show the heart of the Father and bring, a lot, bring truth to people that God loves humanity and that there is a way out of the captivity and bondage that Satan has had mankind held in, praise God. And he, he destroyed the religious institutions. Hello. Ran the money changers out. Had answers for things they could not they could not argue with. When he was twelve years old, he argued or not, he talked with the priest in the temple, and they could not could not uh, comprehend the understanding of this twelve year old. Hallelujah, who had to be about his father's business. Can you say Amen? And when he came to Jerusalem triumphantly, the religious institutions saw the handwriting on the wall, their power, the religious power that they had over the people was slipping away. <clears throat> For they cried, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Salvation has come. And the, the, the institution and the priesthood and their money gigs, we were, they were not happy. And so they took counsel how to kill him and how to destroy him. Uh, not knowing that since they were operating under the spirit of Antichrist anyway, they may be, they may be operating in the priesthood, but they were operating under a different spirit. You may have people in church. Well, we got people in churches. Hello? Right now. We got people who call themselves the reverend. We got people standing in pulpits who are in the institution of what God has, but they are not of God. They got the wrong spirit on them. When they tell us we can save ourselves, that is a mockery. That is a mockery of the resurrection of Jesus. For if you could save yourself, he would not need to come. Hallelujah. But he is, he did rise from the dead. He is resurrected. <coughs> he declared, hallelujah, his resurrection. Amen. He was seen of many. He spent 40 days after the resurrection before uh, Pentecost. Well, about 40 days and about 10 days after he went up, after he, was, after he ascended and sat down to complete his, that work of his ministry and send the Holy Ghost. Um, 
There, he was seen of 500. He was seen of this one. He was seen of the disciples. Hallelujah. Many were raised from the dead, went to the streets, and, and, and were seen of many. Hallelujah. Over 500 people saw him ascend into heaven. Hallelujah. Praise God. I said, praise God. Yeah. Um, I was reading last night that the resurrection of Jesus is one of the most historically um, uh, validated facts there is because he was seen by so many people. You know, praise God. Well, you got your Bible. Did you know that in archaeology, it only takes 10, 10 um, pieces of a work to validate its authenticity? Ancient manuscripts or whatever, like writings and stuff, they, 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 only, they only require 10 of a, of a work. So 10 pieces or 10 copies or whatever. The Bible has over 4,500 They have over 4,500 validating pieces of anti -ar archaeological bits of the Bible. It's a little bit more than the 10 <laughs> that they require for uh, Nostradamus or whatever. Hello? Or Josephus. 4,500. We're loaded for bear. Amen? Yeah. I said Amen. Hallelujah. It's validated. It's historically accurate, quite praise God. I mean, we, we, we can, we can uh, science has even proven by going back and doing all the clock that the, that the sun and the moon stood still for a day. They're able to account for that through historical records, and, 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 and somebody went and did it one time, did all the, the math on it and proved it out. Hallelujah. So the resurrection of Jesus is... is um, is, is not, I, I hope so or maybe so, it's a reality. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And when he was raised from the dead, and so now we in church, this is our high holy day. Now we all love to sing, you know, I like to say this, you know, we all, we have no problem with, a lot of people, even Christians don't have, non-Christians don't have problem with, with Christmas because he's a babe in a manger. There's no threat. The resurrection is to resurrect the King of kings and Lord of lords who you are to submit to and bow to and honor and, and give your life to. And that's where people start having problems. They don't want to submit. <clears throat> Hello. But as we, we celebrate the resurrection, and we, we all we see this. I put it out there this morning. Hallelujah. He's risen. Or, or he's alive. And we sang this morning. He's alive. And we rejoice over the fact that he's alive. Glory to God. He's alive. Now, how does that affect me? Because we can rejoice in the resurrection. We can rejoice in the fact that God raised him up from the dead. We can rejoice that he ever lives to make intercession for us. But how does it affect you? What, what is the significance of the resurrection to you as an individual? That's a big question. And you all all look at me like you need some WD-40 on the brain gears there. They're all kind of rusted up there. You see? Because if Jesus is alive, and he went, you know, he came down, walked, walked down here, did all this stuff, cool stuff, healed the sick, raised the dead, cast out devils, you know, was crucified, then went, came, was raised up, some a bunch of people took off, went and sat back down. And it doesn't affect us. What good was it? To what end was it? You see, the purpose of the resurrection was to present us once again to the Father. To restore God's creation to the heart of the Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You see, when Jesus was raised from the dead, something took place. Greater than what Satan did in the Garden of Eden when Adam committed high treason and sold us all into servitude to Satan. And as John 8, 44, where Jesus says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will fulfill. We have been sold into captivity. We have been sold into Satan's domain. We have been sold into Satan's authority. With no way out. I said with no way out. You could not Save yourself. Helping little old ladies across the street and feeding the hungry and, you know, running a community kitchen and all this stuff, none of that can save you. 
They're all wonderful deeds. They're all acts of kindness. They're all nice, but they will not save you. You are incapable of saving yourself. Hello. You had, that's why Jesus said to Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of heaven. You had to be, have a new birth. You had to be a transformation of your spiritual nature into something different. That's why God said, Paul writes and says, having translated us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There had to be a kingdom change. There had to be a spirit change. There had to be a nature change. And simply adopting acts or creeds of, of um, kindness and niceness was not enough. Ephesians, the second chapter says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. Brother Bill, quick on the draw back there. So I knew where you were going next. <laughs> glory to God. See, we can't boast. God says, thou shalt not share my glory with any. Amen. Not even, not you, not anyone. Amen. There's no way around it. Can you say amen? amen? It's either you get saved or you, or you don't. You cannot save yourself. Jesus told Nicodemus, except a man be born again, born anew, born from above. Yes. Nicodemus went, how can a man be born uh, when he, again when he's old? Can he enter his mother's womb and be born the second time? And Jesus asked, are you a teacher of Israel and don't understand? You don't understand? That that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Marvel not, I say unto thee, thou must be born again. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The spirit, the spirit bloweth where it listeth, and knoweth not where it uh, goeth. Amen. We don't know where it cometh or goeth. Hallelujah. The spirit, we must be born. You had to be born of the spirit. And of water. You had to be born naturally. You had to be born spiritually. Born again. The, the second birth is the re rebirth of your spirit. Where it's made a lot. And then 1 Peter 1, 23. Hallelujah. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. God's word is his seed. When you received that word and accepted Jesus as Lord, you were born again by the incorruptible word of God and made alive unto him. This all became available and possible because of the resurrection. Hallelujah. Why? Because see, when Jesus died, you died. God commended, Romans 5, 8, God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We went with him in spiritual death. He took our place. We identify with him in his spiritual death. That's why water baptism is, a, is an ordinance or, um, I hate to say ritual. It is a command of the Lord to be baptized. But, to be baptized, you see, you, you're, you're buried. You die. You're buried. See, when you die, you get buried. Amen? Hallelujah. And uh, Jesus died for us. So he came and identified with us our spiritual death. And so we were joined together. When he identified with us, we were joined together in death. And he was buried. Colossians 2.12, buried with him in baptism. Praise God. You see, when he was buried, we were buried. Whereas you are also risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who said he's raised from the dead. We'll get to being raised later. Uh, we suffered with him. 
First Peter 2 21 for hearing even here after a year called because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps when he suffered the penalty of death spiritual death when he suffered the penalty of rebellion against God and we just read that suffering on the cross in Psalm 22 hello they gaped upon him with their mouths he was compassed by the, the uh, bulls of Bashan. Hello? All this was going on. He was suffering, paying the penalty for man's death. The judgment of sin was placed on him. He was stricken, smitten, afflicted of God. Look at uh, the fifth, uh, Isaiah 53. Surely hath borne our griefs, verse uh, 4, and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God. And then look, uh, verse 10, it, it, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to sick. Literally, he made him sick when he made his soul an offering for sin. Verse 10. So Isaiah 53, you go 1 through 10, read all that. When Jesus suffered the penalty for man's sin, he, we suffered with him. You understand? Not literally. It, it, we're talking about in, in him carrying it, it's as if we went and paid the price. Because he, he took us with him in that. He was buried. He paid the penalty. We were, we were with him in that penalty being paid, although he was, he was actually experiencing it. We do it through identification. Hallelujah. But then Ephesians 4, 8, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he that captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Uh, he led a processional. Hallelujah. He ascended. When he ascended, we ascended. Glory to God. I said glory to God. When he ascended, we ascended. Hallelujah. And he raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus Far above. Hallelujah. How, how, how far? Far above. All principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Can you shout glory to God? Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. He, he raised us up together. Isn't that just exciting news? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> he says in verse chapter 1, verse 20, which he wrought in Christ, talking about the mighty power, which he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now look down in verse um, 6 or 5. Even when we were dead in our sins, he made us alive together with Christ and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Well, when did that happen? When he was raised up. It's right over in the previous chapter. He was raised above of all principality, power, might, and dominion. He raised us up together. The Bible says together, 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 together. We were raised up above the powers of darkness. We were raised up above the enemy. I'm telling you, glory to God, I'm, the resurrection affects everything about your life. Hallelujah. And, and, then, he, and then only that, <clears throat> you were raised up together and made to sit together yes. in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Praise God. 1 John 3, 1 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Hallelujah. If he's a son, we're sons of God. He was raised. Now listen, you hear people say this all the time. We're all the children of God. No, you're not. Now, we like to say that. We're all, no. 
if that was so, Jesus would not have said, ye are of your father the devil, if we were all the children of God. Hello? He wouldn't have said that. Y'all hear you go home. He couldn't have said that because he'd have been a lion. Now, either Jesus is right or your philosophical buddy is right. I think I'll stay with Jesus. Your philosophical buddy don't know his head from a hole in the ground. Are you here? And, you know, and usually people say that aren't saved. Usually, 99.9% 9 .9 of the time, they're not even Christians. And we're all the children of God because they get real philosophical about stuff. No. Your daddy, the devil. That's not nice. Well, it's the truth. That's why you must be born again and have a transformation of life. So the life of God enters into you, and you're a changed man or a changed woman, and you're no longer the same, praise God. Yeah. <coughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. And you become a son of God. Amen. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God, that we be made heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. You see, when Jesus was raised up from the dead, and I don't want to say this, I don't want, we, I understand, you know, um, significant events in, in the church and the history of humanity. And oftentimes we um, institutionalize those things to the point they lose the full force of their meaning. In many cases, Christianity has institutionalized the resurrection to the point it's an event that Jesus uh, wasn't in the grave anymore, and he left when he sat down. And we don't really allow the application of all the significance of that to affect our lives. Because that's why he did it. It wasn't so he could just go around and say, hey, I got the keys, guys. Look at me. <clears throat> I went and whooped the devil. Payback. I've been looking for this, looking forward to this for a long time. I done whooped the devil. Okay. I got the keys. See you guys later. I'm going to sit down. No. He whooped the devil and got the keys so he could unlock the door and set you free. Hallelujah. So you can no longer be bound. So the saint can no longer govern over your life. So that everything that was evil and antichrist and against God, he had the power to, to, to overcome, praise God. Jesus, hallelujah, came so he could take your place in death. He could be buried for you. He could suffer for you. He could ascend with you. And sit down with you. And then become the firstborn among many brethren. He can become the big brother. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Can you say glory to God? So my challenge today. As we celebrate the beauty of the resurrection and all that it does mean and all that in, in, in church um, ritual and theology and uh, the richness of all of that, did it not cease and stop and find that as the end all, but moves into the full absolute purpose of all of the resurrection is to transform your life and allow God to impart into you his very nature to be a son of God, to be a child of God, to be an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ, to live out the full potential of your purpose and calling by his anointing and by his power, and to be all that he called you to be. I know my thoughts toward you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you an expected end or a hope and a future. God's had a plan for you from the moment you were conceived. Hallelujah. He has a destiny for you. 
but you can only walk in walking in the right power of the resurrection. You cannot save yourself. You cannot deliver yourself. You cannot get yourself free. It takes the power and the anointing of God. Back over in Ephesians chapter 1. And I need to go get these words. But I, I know. Um, and what is exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Those are different Greek words. And I don't remember what they were. But they carry, you know, different aspects of the power of God were released in raising Christ from the dead. And that same power, back up, let me show you. Verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Epinosis, clear, precise, accurate, full experiential knowledge of God. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. And he, he's saying he wants you to know hope of his calling, what is the, and the, what is the riches of the inheritance of the saint, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward. God has power towards you. Glory to God. God doesn't leave you hopeless. I said God doesn't leave you hopeless. God doesn't leave you without something that will get you over the top. He doesn't run over here and go, well, Penny, I'll tell you something. I'm about fed up with you. I've been telling you and telling you and telling you you need to get this straight in your life and you ain't done nothing about it and I'm just fed up. Uh-uh. God's going, I've got the power. I have the anointing. It's available and it's even towards you. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 The things you need, you, you know, fixing your life, there's power towards you coming out of heaven. Yes. Hallelujah. It's released towards you. Yes. Amen. Amen. You ever been anything like, like you ever been down to the beach? You like like for waves to crash in on you, so you go out there and you stand so the waves can crash into you. They're coming towards you. I remember one time me and Janie were uh, we were down at Emerald Isle. If you don't know anything about Emerald Isle area, that's a real steep shelf. Uh, it's, it's a dangerous. Uh, some some areas are really dangerous. The riptides can get really bad. And um, we actually had one one of our church members drown down there uh, one year, a number of years ago. They went out in the water and got out there and got into the currents and and you know they drowned. And um, we were standing there on the shore. Now, you know, you go down to the beach, sometimes waves come in, they'll, they'll hit you, they'll slap you around your, you know, your, 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 your waist or legs and all this kind of stuff. Well, Jane and I were standing on the beach. My parents were up on the shore, and the kids were there playing with them. I'm, I'm sure uh, Bib, the Michelin baby over here, because when Nathan was a little guy, he had triple chin. He was a, he was a I mean, we got pictures of that little old fat face there. <laughs> He, I mean, he was, he, whoop, whoop, whoop. That, that's, that, he used him as the model for the, the, the Michelin commercials as the baby. I'm messing on you, buddy. And uh, they were all there on the shore playing. Jamie and I just standing with our backs looking up there at the kids, watching the kids. And all of a sudden, and we're, and I'm going to tell you, we're in water below my knees. Right over top of us. A wave came over top of our heads. Wow. That's how God's power is. It's coming at you and coming over you. Glory to God. And it's soaking you in his power. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so it's, and it's according to the working of his mighty power. Listen to this. Now listen. Which he wrought in Christ. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Now stop. Is there anything you're doing right now, anything going on in your life, anything you're dealing with, any circumstance you're facing that's more difficult than being raised from the dead? Come on, think about it. Pastor, I'm a lot of money in debt. Is that, worse? is that worse than being raised from the dead? You think it's going to take more power to get you out of debt than it is to raise you from the dead? Hello? He said that the power that's toward you, according to the working of his mighty power, is the power that he used 
when he raised Christ from the dead. Yeah, glory. And sitting at his own right hand in the heavenly places. That's, that's what the resurrection has done. It's placed in you and towards you the resources of the Father himself. So that you can experience the full power, liberty, and freedom of having been identified in death with Christ, buried in death with Christ, judged in death with Christ, raised from the dead with Christ, ascended and seated at the right hand of the Father in Christ. And that place, according to the 21st verse of Ephesians chapter 1, is far above all principality and power and might and dominion. In every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. What is dominion? Things that will come into your life and want to have dominion, domain of you. But you're far above it because of the resurrection. I said because of the resurrection. And now you can live, not because you can save yourself, not because you're some hot shot, not because you're right great, but you can live in victory and freedom and liberty above and beyond because you now have become part of the resurrection through identification with Christ. When you were born again, you receive all the benefits of that resurrection. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? I said, can you say glory to God? Can you shout hallelujah? Praise God. And so today as we celebrate the high holy day of the resurrection, of being born again, of having the life of God in us, let us be reminded and encouraged and stirred up or even finding out for the very first time, you're above a bone only and not beneath. You're the head, not the tail. Amen? You'll be the head, not the tail, above only, not beneath. And that was the blessing of, the, of, of Deuteronomy 28. That was a blessing under an old covenant. I got news for you. The blessing of the new covenant is even greater. Amen. Hallelujah. You are the head, not the tail. You are above only and not beneath. You are liberated by the power of the resurrection. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Lord, turn around find somebody and say, I'm, del I'm liberated by the power of the resurrection. If you find somebody, look around until you find somebody. I want you all to confess it to somebody one time. You are liberated by the power of the resurrection. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. We are so glad to have you today. It may be a little bit different Easter message. I just, I just when, when I was sitting and thinking along these lines, I just kept getting, how does it affect us? How does it affect us? How does it affect us? Hallelujah. Amen. And, I, you know, and like we said, we're sorry that some people were out today. Linda and Karen couldn't come because Linda wasn't here. And uh, Linda said she was going to watch it online. I hope she was able to get it. And, um, and then others are traveling. Hallelujah. And, um, but y'all are here. And we thank you for being here. And then one, I saw Janice and Jerry. They're down running around in Savannah. But they were watching service. <laughs> yeah, let's see here if they say anything about the fact they were down in Savannah watching. Uh, maybe not. Um, going over to Tybee Island, going to eat at the Crab Shack. If you've never eaten there, you need to go. I didn't eat the crab stuff. I ate the smoked ribs. <laughs> and, uh huh. Ooh. I got filled all. The, I got filled all with the Holy Ghost all over again. Said, Lord, that is so good. You got to fill me again just with your spirit, because that is so good. You have blessed, you blessed me so good. Hallelujah. <laughs> Whew. Yeah, JD's over there with this, this mess of meat, throwing it everywhere. And I'm just honking down on them ribs. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think I had some, I may have had Andouille sausage or something too, but it was, oh gosh, it was just good. For, for land lovers, there's even stuff to eat there. Make it slap your mama. Hallelujah.
Praise God. So we'll look forward to everybody being back next week. Hallelujah. But we're so glad that y'all are here and so blessed that you came today. I'm just, I'm just excited. You know, um, think about it, folks. Two years ago, we got kicked out of the community center because of COVID, you know, and then, you know, and then we were running out of space and time at the, at, at the church we were meeting at. And now look at us. We're in our own place, having our own services. Hallelujah. Coming and going like we want to. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I like our church. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We love you. We speak blessings over you. Amen. That's right. West Coast time. <laughs> Larry said, you going, going to start having sunrise service? I said, West Coast time. <laughs> See, it's about 7 o'clock out there when we get, we get ready to start our service. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, we can celebrate with them. I did not get up and celebrate with the kids in Europe. That was at 1 o'clock this morning. <laughs> Actually, I was still awake. I could have. Just don't put it on FaceTime and let me celebrate with you. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. 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 I think uh, <coughs> Shane and Dennis were going to go to some cathedral and uh, see what it's like to see there, uh, uh, a, a Easter Mass in, in Europe. And um, Jess and Kat were at the Versailles Castle uh, this morning well, I'll look with some Baroque music festival going on. Hallelujah. Praise God. So. I'm a little jealous, but then I was happy that we, you know, we got our kids where they, they, they like to travel. They're, they're happy to travel. Now, Bubba, don't, he, he's happy with a fishing pole in his hand. <laughs> Put him out in the, down up some river where ain't nobody around and just let him fish all day. We got, got rivers in Europe. <laughs> okay. Might get him over there after all. Hallelujah. Let's all stand up. Those that are watching by the internet, thank you for joining us. Praise the Lord. We love you. God bless you. Remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Whatsoever is born of God, overcome up the world. And this is the victory that will come up the world, even our faith. Love you. See you next time here at Expedition Church. Praise the Lord.